According to some Chinese experts analyzing this data on March 4th, the J-35 is purported to exceed the capabilities of the U.S. F-35 and if deployed on the upcoming Fujian-class aircraft carrier, could potentially match or even outstrip American naval air power. Critics within China mock the practice of comparing the past performance of the F-35 with the future potential of the J-35, and then claiming parity or superiority in certain aspects for the J-35. They argue that this approach of being harsh and judging others while lenient with oneself leads to baseless boasting. Some even absurdly claim that the J-35 is specifically designed to counter the F-35, a notion that is met with ridicule. Chinese commentators have pointed out that the J-35 is undeniably inferior to the F-35, stating there is no real contest in terms of technology. Claims of the J-35's superior maneuverability or the F-35's supposed stealth limitations due to its bulk are dismissed as fantasy. Boasting about a so-called late-comer advantage only serves to amuse rather than convince. The U.S. F-35's latest upgrade, known as Block 4, is currently in development, with the F-35AC models likely to adopt the XA-100 adaptive cycle engine in the upcoming years. Such an upgrade will lead to improvements like faster speeds and an increased combat range, among other advancements. This includes 13 electronic warfare upgrades, 11 radar and optical system improvements, 8 logistical and support changes, 7 human-machine interaction and network system enhancements, 7 cockpit and navigation system upgrades, and 7 new weapon systems. These updates are all to be completed by 2026. In contrast, the J-35 will definitely not be ready for carrier operations by 2026, with 2030 being a more realistic target for its deployment. If it achieves combat readiness in the early 2030s, it would be fortunate. At the same time, the U.S. Navy is progressing with its next-generation air dominance program, introducing a sixth-generation fighter anticipated for its initial flight around 2025-2026. Despite potential delays, this cutting-edge aircraft is on track for deployment in the early 2030s and aims to be fully combat-ready by 2035. J-15 plus J-35 versus F-35 plus F-A-18. By that time, the matchup for the PLA Navy won't be the optimistic projection of their J-15 and J-35 going up against the F-35 and F-A-18. Instead, they will be facing a combination of the F-35 and the new 6th generation fighters, representing a substantial leap in technological generations. Consequently, the current boasts of the Chinese Communist Party, which rely on theoretical data, are intrinsically flawed. The once impressive specs that look good on paper today will be surpassed and obsolete by that time. The reason the PLA Naval Air Force is considering the J-35 is straightforward. They have no other suitable options. The J-20 isn't designed for aircraft carriers, and even if it were, it wouldn't be the best fit. The J-15 falls short when compared to the F-A-18, leaving the Shenfei J-35 as the only project that can quickly bridge this capability gap. Relying on the yet-to-be-defined 6th generation fighter jet isn't a viable immediate solution. Pro-CCP media claims that the J-35 has a maximum takeoff weight of 35 tons compared to the F-35's 31 tons, suggesting it surpasses the F-35 in this regard. However, a closer look at these figures reveals a different story. Although the J-35's takeoff weight is slightly higher, its weapon payload is a mere 8 tons compared to the F-35's nearly 10 tons. The J-35 requires two engines, whereas the F-35 accomplishes its missions with just one. Despite being over 17 meters long, one meter longer than the F-35, the J-35's payload is significantly less. The question arises, where did it go? To reduce landing speed, the J-35 had to increase its main wing area significantly, adding independent flaps and ailerons, which led to a drastic weight increase. Moreover, the J-35's equipment and components, even with similar functionality, are bulkier and heavier, compromising reliability and maintainability. Modern air combat imposes stringent requirements on avionics and sensors, further burdening the J-35. What's even more laughable is that American missiles are much smaller in size for the same lethality and range compared to Chinese missiles. Therefore, even if the J-35 is fully loaded with 8 tons of missiles, its overall destructive power still falls short of the missiles launched from an F-35. 
This means that even though the J35 is powered by two engines, its performance still falls short of the F35, which operates with just one engine. This gap is likely to widen as the F-35 is upgraded to include advanced adaptive cycle engines such as the XA-100 and the XA-101. In contrast, even if the J-35 were to be equipped with the cutting-edge WS-19 engines, it still wouldn't stand a chance of catching up. Moreover, the U.S. is developing next-generation megawatt-class carrier-based laser weapons capable of shooting down air-to-air -air missiles. Since the WS-19 engine doesn't support such laser weapons, the J-35 is at a significant disadvantage in the future of air combat. Though the J-35 utilizes two engines and has a slight advantage in takeoff weight, its payload capacity and future upgrade potential are completely inferior to the F-35. The data hyped by the CCP, when scrutinized, only serves to highlight the J-35's deficiencies in design concept and technical level. Faced with the continuously evolving advanced capabilities of the F-35, the J-35 seems helpless in comparison. With such a stark contrast in capabilities, it's perplexing what the CCP has to boast about. The J-35 fighter jet claimed to be China's version of the F-35 is essentially a complete copy except for the engine, which it failed to replicate. This includes the method of opening the cockpit canopy, which was directly mimicked from the F-35 and modified. China's inability to produce a competitive engine and the lack of progress in indigenous development forced efforts into aerodynamic design. However, the complexity of designing a carrier-based aircraft that must achieve supersonic cruising and short takeoff and landing is a significant challenge. Consequently, the J-35 was copied from the F-35 and then patched up as needed. However, due to insufficient precision in wind tunnel testing, it cannot accurately simulate flight conditions, resulting in an operational radius of only 1,350 kilometers, still less than the F-35's 1,380 kilometers. The WS-19 engines produced using 3D printing have questionable durability. The radar is provided by the China Electronics Technology Group's No. 14 Research Institute and the missiles by the Chinese Air-to-Air -Air Missile Research Institute's PL-15 series. Stealth capabilities rely on new materials that absorb radar waves, with bulky and heavy electronic equipment and weapons crammed into the airframe, making the J-35 a makeshift solution. Pilots flying this aircraft are essentially risking their lives. The PLA Navy's commanders have no choice but to deploy the J-35, as it's the only option given by the authorities. There's a joke among the military that commanders tell pilots to eject at the first sign of trouble, especially admitting that the J-35 is a flying coffin and the most unfortunate fighter jet in history. Hong Kong media reports suggest that the radar cross-section, RCS, of the J-35 is just 0.01 square meters. Citing this information, a Chinese expert argues that it greatly surpasses the American F-35C carrier-based fighter, which has an RCS of 0.5 square meters. This comparison is used to highlight the J-35's superior stealth capabilities. However, it's no secret that the F-35's frontal RCS is about 0.0015 square meters, comparable to the B-2 bomber. The 0.5 square meter RCS data cited by the Chinese expert refers to the F-35 in a non-stealth mode. Mixing these two data points, the expert either lacks knowledge or intentionally misleads the public. The U.S. has been researching stealth technology since the 1970s, from the F-117 to the F-22, B-2, F-35, and B-21, with each generation of stealth aircraft representing the pinnacle of technology at the time. The U.S. has amassed extensive experience and technology in this field, something the CCP cannot simply catch up with through media propaganda. Currently, China lacks effective methods to counter America's F-22 and F-35 stealth fighters. Even Russia's advanced S-400 defense system has been outmaneuvered by Israel's F-35s and China's current defense systems are ineffective against the F-35. Traditional single radar systems struggle to detect stealth aircraft with extremely low RCS. Detecting and tracking stealth aircraft requires the use of multiple radars operating in coordination. The Japanese technique uses two radars placed directly opposite each other, 
When a stealth aircraft passes between them, the radars may not be able to catch signals bouncing back from the aircraft. However, the radar positioned on the opposite side notices a black hole, where the signal from the front radar should have been received. This black hole is essentially the shadow formed by the aircraft blocking the radar signals. By tracking how the shadow moves on the radar screen, the general direction of the aircraft can be figured out. But just knowing the direction isn't enough, it's also important to pinpoint how far away the aircraft is. Traditional methods for measuring distance don't work here because the radar can't directly catch waves bouncing off the aircraft, so special techniques are needed to find the exact distance. One radar shuts off its transmission, while another immediately starts sending out a signal and begins to measure time. By calculating the duration it takes for this signal to reach the second radar, and considering the speed at which radar signals travel, the distance to the aircraft can be calculated. As the aircraft keeps moving, the radars have to constantly alternate between sending signals and turning off to maintain a continuous tracking of the aircraft's location and path, as long as it remains within their range. While this approach is viable in theory, its real-world implication is quite challenging, requiring radars to perform with high efficiency and in perfect sync. Currently, China's radar technology, predominantly consisting of traditional scanning systems, may not be advanced enough for this task. These conventional radars are notably less effective at detecting stealth aircraft. This means that F-35s could potentially approach and attack Chinese coastal areas repeatedly without adequate Chinese defense response. Despite China's breakthroughs in gallium nutride power amplifier chip technology for radar applications, the U.S. maintains a lead in overall stealth aircraft detection capabilities thanks to a larger fleet and more mature systems. Although both the J-35 and F-35 are equipped with Electro-Optical Distributed Aperture Systems, EODAS, there is a significant performance difference between the two. The F-35A's EODAS, with six infrared sensors, offers 360-degree awareness and sophisticated electronic intelligence capabilities. This allows for the passive detection, automatic tracking, and classification of nearby aircraft. Coupled with the AIM-9X BII missile, the F-35A can launch missiles in any direction without needing to maneuver into a favorable position. Moreover, the F-35's Joint Strike Fighter electronic warfare system enables it to detect opponents without being detected itself. The F-35 also benefits from an advanced sensor fusion data link system. This system can integrate data with AWACS naval destroyers, satellites, and other radars to identify, track, and eliminate enemy aircraft beyond its own detection range. The skill and experience of pilots are also crucial variables affecting the outcome of combat. According to public data, U.S. pilots receive 20% to 35% more training than their Chinese counterparts, as pilot skills are as critical as aircraft speed and performance. Given the uncertain maturity of the J-35's weapon systems, avionics, and data link integration, combined with the lack of pilot training programs, its actual combat effectiveness is difficult to assess. China has a long history of boasting about its weapon systems and military strength. A notable example is in August 2022, following Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, when the PLA began military drills around Taiwan's waters. Although they initially planned to fire 70 missiles, they ended up firing only 11 before ceasing operations. It turned out that the PLA's radar systems were completely unable to detect the movement of U.S. military aircraft and the missile launch data was intercepted by the U.S. military. What's even more astonishing was the performance of the highly praised Dongfeng missiles. These missiles were reportedly diverted off their course by an unseen invisible hand and ended up in Japan's exclusive economic zone instead. This test launch turned into a farce, exposing the significant technological backwardness of the PLA's equipment. This incident served as a stark wake-up call for the PLA about the gap in military capabilities. The fact that the U.S. military could easily alter the trajectory of Dongfeng missiles is seriously concerning to them. Since missiles adjust their flight path using small fins, even slight changes can cause them to miss their targets by vast distances. What's more troubling is that the missiles tested were dated models from the 1980s. 
These were equipped with simpler navigation systems thought to be more resistant to electronic interference, yet they were still vulnerable to the U.S.'s invisible hand. This unsettling outcome led the PLA to be deeply unsettled and had to abruptly stop their missile tests. Xi Jinping was notably furious after the event, openly criticizing the PLA's electronic countermeasure capabilities as being an entire generation behind. He lamented, Our radars cannot detect incoming U.S. military aircraft. The whims of artists cannot be applied to military command. If we are to fight real battles, we should not engage in public opinion wars or take military strategies from public opinion. Stop the baseless boasting. In fact, there had been encouragement from government authorities for online acclaim of the J-20's capabilities. However, with only a few missiles fired and U.S. aircraft moving unchallenged, such praise proved to be a form of self-deception. Even the South China Morning Post, which generally supports the Communist Party, couldn't ignore the debacle and also reported on the embarrassing incident. This event underscores that the PLA's real forte lies in psychological warfare and boastfulness. The practice of inflating the strength of their military equipment through propaganda is a well-established routine.